Hey guys, welcome to another video on this new networks and deep learning tutorial. In this video here, we're going to generate a data set and then we're going to annotate it later on as well. So we're going to use OpenSV to actually like open up a webcam, store some images or like save some images for our data set. And then we're going to do annotation or labeling with RoboFlow. So we can actually like annotate and label all the bounding boxes of the objects that we actually want to maybe like train a model on later on. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server, I'll link to it down the description here. You can come to join the channel, shadows about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. Everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel. Also, if you have some problems in your own projects and so on, I can also give you some guidance and help with your projects if you're a member of the channel. So thank you guys. So now we're jumping straight into Visual Studio Code here, and I'm going to show you the script that we're actually going to use to generate our data set. So everything will be down in my in, a, in my GitHub link down in the description. You can just take that, copy it, and make your own data set and label it, and then you can create your own neural networks later on. But here, we're going to import OpenCV. We're just going to open up our webcam capture here. Then we're just going to have our webcam running, like a capture here running as long as the webcam is open. Then we're just going to read in the images from our webcam one by one. Then we're going to check if we hit a key, if we just hit escape on our keyboard, we will terminate our program and then we will end the data generation process. If we hit S on our keyboard, it will then save, uh, save the image that is currently shown or like read in from our uh, webcam. And then it will store it in this data set path here that we specified um, inside of this inwrite function. Then when we actually just terminate our program, we'll just release our webcam and destroy all the windows that we have opened up with OpenCV. So this is basically a really simple script. We're just going to run it here so you can see what is actually going on. So here we will just have a webcam. We're just going to open up my webcam here and then we can just take a couple of images. Then I'll load, upload them to RoboFlow. I'll show you how we can actually like annotate images with different kind of objects. So here we're just going to annotate some different kind of objects. I'll just take out my keys here um here and we can then hit s now we have actually saved an image we can also see over here to the left that in the data set folder we now have this zero dot png image then we're just going to take a couple of images here then we can then later uh annotate them in roboflow and i'm going to show you how to do it so here we're just going to take a couple of images just some here without the keys so we can actually label the lamp here maybe the table here some cops and also the tv here in the background so now we just have a couple of images. If you want to create your own data set and so on, you should actually like generate more images, but you can even tra train like a YOLO V5 model with only like 50, 50 to 100 images of some optics that you want to do optic detection on. So right here, we're doing specific optic detection of, 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 of constant optics that we choose in our environment. We just need to generate a data set, label the data set with all the different kind of bounding boxes of all the optics that we want to detect. And then we're just going to train a YOLO model on it, uh, for example, for doing optic detection. I've already a video about that, how we can actually train your own custom optic detector here on the channel. So make sure to check that out if you want to know how we can train a YOLO V5 model with your own data set to do custom optic detection on optics that you choose by, uh, by yourself. So here we're just going to terminate our program. And then we have a data set over here to the left. We can see all the images here that we're now going to load into RoboFlow. So now we're jumping into the Robo website here. You can just go to like RoboFlow website, sign in with your GitHub email uh, or something like that. And then you can actually go in here, create your own projects um, and so on. You can just go with the public version uh, for your own like uh, private, like uh, for your own personal projects um, and so on. So here we're just going to choose a project name. We're just going to call it like objects. We have had these keys. So we're just going to keep it, call it keys. We're just going to add other labels too. Then we can choose the license here. We're just going by this default one here, the public domain license, optic detection. We want to do optic detection with bounding boxes. So we want to detect specific optics inside of our image and not only classification. We can also choose classification if we just want to classify is this image uh, or like this is, is, is this a cat or this is dog. We don't want to like uh, find where exactly is the dog or the optic in the image. But in this video here, we want to do optic detection. Down here, we have some annotation letters. Up here, we're just going to call it objects. And then down here for the letters, this is just one annotation group that we're going to do. And we want to do keys here for one of the objects in our actual images that we want to label. So here we can just create this public project and then we will get up here. Then we can actually just drag and drop our images from the folder that we just created into this uh, into RoboFlow here. We will upload the images and then we can then do annotations uh, with, the, with their tool. 
Then we can actually just select the files that we want to annotate. Then we're going to here, we you just find it within the desktop and then into data. And then we have the data set, data set here. Then we can just take all the images here and open it up. And then we actually like just upload these images. You can upload up to 10,000 images in the public, uh, public, public version of RoboFlow here. So it's actually like a really good tool to do annotation. It's also really easy. And when we're going to use it later on and export our data set, it's also only like three lines of code that we need to import uh, into our Python code when we're going to train our models. So here we can see that we have all these things here. We can just say finish uploading. Then it's just uploading files here, zero seconds remaining. Now it's done uploading all the files and you're just verifying it. Here we can see the total number of labels that we have or like to total images to label. We can see some different kind of teammates. You can add co like colleagues to, to the project here as well and so on. But now we have the batch name here uploaded and then we can assign the images. So here we're just going to assign it to, to me. We're just going to assign the images. So we can actually like assign images to different kind of persons. So here we have nine un un unnotated uh, images here. So we can actually just click on one of them. And then we get up this annotation tool here. We can actually go down here to label assist where we can actually like have uh, a model running. Like we can, for example, have a Cocoa model running or like a model trained on a Cocoa data set. So we can do automatic labeling um, with a model. Um, with a model, You can even choose your custom model if you want to do uh, auto labeling of your own data set. Here we can just try to do the Koga model and see if we can actually like find something inside of our images or else we will just go in, label it um, our, by ourselves here so we can actually see how that is done too. Right now it might take a few seconds, a few moments here as it says. Here we're just going to select 80 classes so we can see what can actually like find in the images. We see it found a person that's really good. We can go to the next image. Here it found a cop. So over here to the left, we can see the cop that it detected. The next image, it didn't find anything. Here it, find, it found a person and a cop, a cop, a cop, and a person again. And then it found a person here, but with a, like a larger boundary box. Then we can actually go in here. So now we have these labeled images here automatically. We could also go in here and label them by ourselves. If we want to, for example, detect this as a face, then we can just go in here, annotate, draw the boundary box, then we get up this tab. We can just call this face. And then when we hit uh, save here, or we can just hit enter, then we will actually label this boundary box here as a face. All the information about like where is the boundary box in the image and so on, it will be stored in the correct files. And then later on, we can actually like, just export those files, train them together with our data set. But Roboflow does all this for us. We just need to call a few lines of code when we're actually like, going to train our model. We can also take the lamp here, for example. We're just going to draw a boundary box around it. We're just call it, going to call it lamp. Over here to the right, we have a TV. We're just going to label that as well. So we have a TV and then we have the cops down here at the bottom. But now you can see you can just label an arbitrary number of uh, objects in your own images here. This is really nice. It's really cool. And you can even see like it's like, like really fast. You can do like the label assistant and so on. Repeat the previous ones and so on. You can move around the boundary boxes after they act like defined. So we can actually specify a shorter, like a smaller range here for the person and so on. We can change all the boundary boxes. So this is a really nice tool and you should definitely use this here if you have your if you want to create your own custom uh, model detection algorithm or like neural network to do custom object detection of for example keys and so on here we can just take the keys label them just write keys over here to the left we can see all the groups that we, that is actually like in the image and also the unused classes so here again, we can just go to the next image, label it. This is keys again. Here we can see all the different kind of objects that we, that we actually like have in our data set. So again, we're just going to save it. And then when we're done actually like annotating our images, we can just go back here to this to the start. And then we can just go up here, add to data set. We can specify like how much do we want to use for training, validation and test. In this video here, we're just going to go with 90% train, 10% uh, validation or like 80% uh, training. 10% validation and 10% test. We're just going to add the images to our data set. So this is one collaboration from one. And then we're just going to generate a new version up here with our data set. We can do some pre-processing techniques. We can do augmentation on the images here as well. We don't have to do anything. We just need to upload our images, annotate them, and then we can just use these techniques here from RoboFlow. So this is really nice and it's just really uh, convenient when you're creating your own custom object uh, model. So here we can resize the, we can specify the dimension that we want to resize our models for. We can add an additional pre-processing step. We can grayscale our images. We can isolate objects, static cropping, and so on. 
But down here, we don't want to do any pre-balsing steps in this video here. So we can just go down to augmentation. We can do flip, we can do horizontal and vertical flip of our images. So we can actually get more images in our data set with more variation. So we, our models would actually like be more uh, robust to do optic detection or like custom optic detection. We can also have crop, rotation, shear. Here we can crop the image. We can specify how much do we want to crop the image. Uh, so we get more variation, some zoom effect in our image too. So we're making our model robust to zoom effects. We can add some other different kind of things, shearing, rotation. So how much do we want to rotate our image? If we think that our optic will be rotated around in the image frame, it could it could actually help the model by applying some rotation too in the augmentation. But here we can then hit continue. We can go down and generate our data set. So here for the public version, we can generate up to three times the images uh, that we uploaded, and then it will do augmentation for um, for like two thirds uh, of the image data set that we have. So then we can just go down, hit generate, and it will generate a new version here of RoboFlow or like for a data set. And then after right now we have all the images, we can see that the data augmentation is actually like applied on these images, and it still has the bounding boxes um in this image here with the with the acts like annotated or like augmented images as well so it both has augmentation and annotation and here we can just go through our data set here with our uh, 28 images so this was just our test set here so now when we're done here we can actually just go up here and either we can hit more we can rename or delete our version or we can actually just go into export we can download our whole data set here as a zip file to our computer or we can just show some downloadable code here. So we can actually just pass these lines of code into our Python script and run it. And then we can just train our model. So first of all, we need to choose a format depending on which model do you want to train. If you want to train a YOLV5 model, you'll just choose this uh, text format here, YOLV5 PyTorch. Or if you want to do it in, in uh, Keras or something like that, you need to choose the other different kind of formats. Also, we can use the Pascal VUC. So this is basically just how it's how it's defining the bounding boxes and the labels in a specific file. So this will just be a text file containing all the information about the class and also the coordinates of the bounding box that you have annotated in the image. So you can then use that for supervised learning when it's actually like trained in the neural networks. So here we're just going to go with the OLV5. Then we're going to show the downloadable code. We hit continue. It's saving the files and exporting them. And then we can see these lines of code is the only thing that we need to, to act like add to our notebook. If we have already installed RoboFlow on a local machine, then we just need to import these four lines of code. Then you can actually just copy these four lines of code here. And then when you're training your custom YOLV5 model optic detector, you can just go inside the data set here, pass this data set variable and these different kind of paths in, path inside of this one here to the YOLV5 model. And then you're just going to train it so this is a really nice way to, to generate images, uh, annotate them here in RoboFlow. It's really nice. It's really cool. And it's actually really easy and fast to do. We, are, like, we can generate a data set in five, 10 minutes with the images, and then we can do annotation depending on how many uh, optics that you want to, 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 to actually detect in the image. Uh, but it's really fast. It's really cool. And the tools are really nice. And also if you want to do some auto labeling, it also has that feature. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and want more in the future. It just will help me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial where we're talking about basic image operations, camera calibration, stereo vision to get depth information in, in, in the image, how we can convert act like stereo vision and depth images to point clouds, do point cloud processing and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that tutorial, I'll link to it up here or else I'm not seeing you next week, guys. Bye for now.